Hello friends, this video on our environment part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us now talk about another concept which is called as food web. So when I say chain, it was a straight line. When I say web, what, what, what comes to your mind when you hear the word web? So generally we think of a spider web, right? You would have seen that net like structure or the web which is prepared by a spider. So it is a hodgepodge net like structure, right? So let us see what is a food web. It is nothing but interconnected food chains forming a web like pattern. So here you can see it is not a straight line at all. Here you can see different organisms eating up different other organisms. So in a basically it is not that one organism can be eaten up only by one other organism. For example, when you take the example of plants. So how many animals are there which can feed on plants? I mean, how many herbivores are there? There are many. You can think of a deer. You can think of a rabbit. You can think of a goat. You can think of a cow, a buffalo. So there are so many animals which can feed on plants. Similarly, when you think of a rabbit, there are so many other animals which can feed on a rabbit, right? Similarly, when you talk of the goat, there are so many other animals which can feed on the goat. A tiger can feed on a goat, a lion can feed on a goat, right? So there are many animals which can eat up a particular animal and that is how the food chains get connected and they can form a web-like structure and this is known as a food web. So here you can see the example of a food web. So here you see different types of plants. They are eaten by animals like rabbit, squirrel, insects, right? Now these in turn are eaten by frogs, birds, bigger birds, cats. So now when you look at this frog, this frog can be eaten up by a snake. This can also be eaten by this bigger bird, right? So the same animal can be eaten up by two different animals. Now this animal in turn can be eaten up by this tiger and this snake in turn can be eaten up by this hawk or it can also be eaten up by this peacock. So now you see why, why, what gives rise to food web? The fact that one living organism can be eaten up by multiple living organisms give rise to a food web. So these are nothing but interconnected food chains because if you look at only this chain, this is a straight chain, right? So it is a food chain. Similarly, when you look at this straight chain, this is again a food chain. So this line actually connects these two food chains. So why did this line arise? Because one organism that is this frog can be eaten up by two organisms that is the snake and this bird. Right? So food webs are nothing but interconnected food chains. They arise because of the fact that one organism can be consumed by multiple living organisms. So with this we have concluded, we saw that how living organisms, that is how the biotic components in an ecosystem depend on one another for obtaining their food. But that doesn't mean that it is only the biotic components which play a role in the ecosystem. The abiotic components are also equally important because if the abiotic components do not exist, the ecosystem will not be able to exist. So let us quickly look at how the abiotic and biotic components depend on each other. So far we have discussed about these biotic components that is the living organisms. So we saw that th these living organisms depend on one another for obtaining their food. But do you think that food is the only thing that an organism need to survive? If you get food is that enough for your survival? There are plenty of other things as well which we need for our survival. And for that we need the abiotic components. Do you think that we can survive without water? No, right? And do, did you find any way to obtain water from the biotic components? No. So for biotic, so for water we are dependent on the abiotic components. Similarly, do you think we can survive if there is no air? If there is no air, then there is no oxygen, no carbon dioxide. So we cannot breathe in. Without breathing, will we be able to survive? Because when we breathe, in oxygen that actually makes respiration to happen. If there is no respiration inside the cells, 
there is no cell growth and the organism is not going to be alive right so water air soil these are some of the things which actually are needed up by any living organism for the various metabolic processes which take place inside our body they also need all these things for processes like growth and reproduction so not only these animals every animal starting from the microorganisms or the birds or the variety of insects all of them not only need other living organisms but also the abiotic components for their survival so this is how the biotic and abiotic components interact with each other and survive and form an ecosystem and many such ecosystems exist in our environment thank you Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.